International Society of Nephrologies pre-World Congress interview series. I am Dr. Namrata and I am a social media team member for the ISNWC in 2021. With me today is a brilliant nephrologist, Dr. Mamita Barua. Her area of interest, her special area of interest is genetics and she has attained world renown in this particular field. She is a clinical scientist with the University Health Network and an assistant professor of nephrology at the University of Toronto. She is also a scientist within the Advanced Diagnostic Division at the Toronto General Hospital Research Institute. Moreover, she is the heart and brain behind the Barua Lab at Toronto, which specializes in next generation sequencing based testing for better understanding and management of kidney diseases. I am extremely thrilled and honored to be interviewing her today. Hello and welcome, Dr. Barua. Thank you for being with us today. Thanks so much, Namrata, for that really kind introduction. I hope I live up to the expectations during our talk today. So at the World Congress, you will be speaking on when and how to use genetic testing for active management. So what is your opinion regarding the potential of genetic testing in the management of kidney disorders? I really started to understand the power of incorporating genetic testing in my own clinical practice about five years ago when I started working in the hereditary kidney disease clinic at Toronto General Hospital. And I saw that obtaining a molecular diagnosis for patients, one, provided a definitive diagnosis, two, provided prognosis in certain settings, uh, Three, informed treatment, for instance, in Fabry's disease. Additionally, it also aids in family planning. Um, and so if you obtain a positive genetic test, this opens up the options of pre-implantation genetic diagnosis and prenatal diagnosis for families. And, um, and this is not something that's insignificant to families with multiple affected family members. And then finally, you can use genetic testing as well uh, to screen young relatives who might be interested in donating uh, a kidney to affected family members, but who themselves may be at risk of having inherited a gene variant that is responsible for the disease in the family. And so those are some of the utilities uh, to genetic testing uh, in clinical practice. I absolutely agree with you. Uh, what are your recommendations that as nephrologists, how can we integrate uh, genetic testing into our day-to-day -day management of patients? So I think um, this is definitely a evolving field. Certainly, even when I was training about 10 years ago, it is not something that we talked about that much. But as technology um, and research has advanced, so too has our ability to integrate it into genetic testing. But of course, for the majority of people who are not involved in, uh, who are not doing this as a uh, research, uh, as their primary research focus, it can be, um, can be hard to know how, uh, where to start. Uh, there are a number of platforms that, such as the World Congress of Nephrology, where there are, will be talks on the practical management of, or the practical aspects of integrating genetic testing into clinical practice, such as the one that I will give. Uh, there are also CME courses, uh, uh, CME courses uh, available to also teach uh, clinicians how to integrate genetic testing into clinical practice. I think what I would say is that a nephrologist doesn't have to know every single detail of uh, every single detail or nuance of genetic testing, but should have some comfort with being able to order it and speak to their patients about it. And of course, if uh, there are further details to explore that the nephrologist is not comfortable with, should also uh, feel, should also uh, feel comfortable in referring to a medical genetics for further management and counseling. 
I can see your point here. We come from a resource limited setting right now, and for us to always get genetic testing is different. But uh, I think it would be very useful, particularly as you said, in identifying young patients, in identifying suitable donor for, for transplant patients. So I, I really agree with what you're saying right now. I agree, resources are limited and not available widely around the world. The one, uh, one thing that we've learned during the pandemic is virtual care. And certainly that's what we're doing now is providing virtual care to people from a distance and are able, uh, and even ourselves, we send our testing uh, not locally. I mean, some of our tests is local, but a lot of our testing is also sent um, outside of uh, the country. Okay, that's, that's great. Can you tell us something about what you'll be talking about at the Congress? So how to integrate genetic testing into your clinical practice, how to, um, how to uh, in, interpret genetic testing, though my preface to that is that I will talk about interpretation of genetic testing, but this should not be a barrier to ordering genetic testing because interpretation will be done by the molecular lab that you use, but just so that you understand a little bit of what the report uh, consists of. I'll also talk about the clinical uses and give some examples um, and how you can use genetic testing results to inform your management in your patient. Okay. It's been really great talking to you, Dr. Barua, and I'm really looking forward to your talk. I invite all our delegates to definitely attend Dr. Barua's talk because I'm certain that it will have a significant impact in the way we manage our patients. Thank you so much for sparing the time for today's interview, Dr. Barua. I hope you have a good day. Thank you, Dr. Parikh. I enjoyed talking to you.